everybody, my name is Jo and I love to read. Today I'm going to be doing my March and April wrap up. Now the quality is not as good as I normally like to have it. My camera died so I don't have time to charge it as well because I'm doing this while baby is happy in this room that he never normally gets to go in so that's that. And then also I don't have any makeup on which I normally do but again I thought I'd grab the opportunity because I'd left this door open while I was printing something and Miles crawled in because he is crawling now and I thought Let's do it, let me film it now. The first book I have to talk about is Beneath the Keep by Erica Johansson. Sadly, this one is, I wouldn't necessarily call it a DNF. I started it and then decided to put it down because I was just not feeling it at the time, but I didn't want to get rid of it. So this is a prequel to the Teeling series. It's in a medieval-esque England world, so not, not exactly England, but medieval England-esque. And it's about a girl called Kelsey, who is the rightful queen, but she had been taken away from the castle at a young age because her mum had been, I can't remember whether she'd been killed or she died. Anyway, it's not important. But her mum had died when she was young and to keep her safe, they hid her away. And then when the book starts, Kelsey is 18 and she's going, or 17, and she's going to take the kingdom over. This book is about her mum. And I was really excited to read it when I got it, but then took a little bit of time. And just when I picked it up, I just wasn't in the mood or I was in the mood and then my mood changed pretty quickly. So... I've just put this one down for now. I am sort of curious though to find out how the Alyssa that's in the part that I've read so far ends up becoming the queen that she's talked about because she is sort of thought as, at least from Kelsey's point of view, as a bit of a weak queen that made all these decisions that weren't for the best of the kingdom and was thought to have been a little bit self-serving. But the Alyssa that we get in here is still quite young. She's not queen yet. Her mum's the queen at the moment and she really wants to be better for the tilling and save the tilling and stuff. So I am interested in reading this book again and at the moment actually now that I'm saying this this is kind of interesting me when I'm a bit of a, in a slump at the moment so maybe I will decide to pick this one up now because yeah, I actually feel like it as opposed to the stuff that I'm reading right now that I don't. The next book that I read and finished in April and March, probably more in April, this one, is A Feast for Crows by George R. R. Martin. So this one says book five on the spine in... You can't see it. There we go. Five in the A Song of Ice and Fire series, but this one is actually book four because in these editions, the previous book was split up into two. I love it when they're split up, so that's fine. I'm not really going to talk a lot about what happens in this because that'd obviously be a lot of spoilers for people. I will say though, I'm going to mention characters' names, so if you find it's a spoiler with these books to know whether a character is still alive, then skip ahead because I find that a spoiler, but if not, then I'm just going to say that my favourite character in this book is Jamie, which is really good because this is basically basically what the book has been about is Jamie and Cersei. Not many of the other characters are featured in this. They are here, Brienne as well. She's in it a lot, but we're missing a lot of the key characters like Daenerys and Jon Snow and Tyrion. We get a bit of Arya and a bit of Sansa in this as well, but at the back of it, George R. R. Martin actually talks about how this book is actually only half of this book or half of this story. So he could either have told the whole story, ooh, half the story with all the characters or the entire story for only some. So the next book is going to be a continuation, which is A Dance with Dragons. Did I enjoy this book? Did I not? I did stop halfway through it. And then I, when I came back to it, I started tabbing <laughs> and annotating it. So that's why that's like this. The first half's similar with all George R. R. Martin's books with me. The first half is a bit like meh and the second half is really good. So I enjoyed it. Not much to say at this point because there's not much I can talk about but I was interested again to see Jamie's character development and I'm interested to see how he goes with the rest of the series assuming he survives of course. And the next comic that I finished is Saga Volume 3 by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I'm really loving this series so much. It's so much fun. In this one, we get a tiny little bit of Alana's backstory, the main character, whereas in the past we got Marco's one. I'm still not super, like, I don't know exactly what the slave girl, I think her name is Sophia now, but I'm not exactly sure what part she's going to play in this yet, but I'm I'm still enjoying it. I, it's, it's a great series. I really recommend it to anybody picking it up. So Saga is the story of two people, Marco and Alana, who are on opposing sides of this war that's been going on for centuries and nobody kind of really even remembers what the war is about, except that they're still warring. And they end up falling in love, running away together, and then having a baby. The Saga volumes start off when Alana is giving birth to the baby and it's basically like a story of how they're trying 
trying to survive. At this point, we see the development of where the couple may end up. The first two and most of this one has just been trying to escape the people and just trying to survive in the hours and weeks after birth. But now it seems like this is kind of a bit of a setup at the end of this one that we might actually see how the family intends to support themselves and survive and prosper in a place where everybody on both sides wants them all dead because the fact that two people of the opposing sides can fall in love and have a baby scares them because whoever the people are that are making this war happen for whatever reason don't want that because then all the soldiers might realize and decide not to fight so anyways another great volume i can't wait to read the next one i'm not sure when that's going to be because i have to spend money on it so i am planning on doing a spoiler review of volumes one to three because i do have thoughts and i would just say just as like a quick i'm not going to spoil anything for you guys but if you're wondering about reading this give it at least to the end of the second volume or the third if you can the first one was like okay but a little bit like mm. but the second and the third were just like oh my god I'm really enjoying this I don't really have a lot to say on this next one especially that won't be repeating my reading vlogs but just for the sake of transparency because I generally always talk about everything I read that's that I picked up Frostbite started to tab it which is the second book in the Vampire Academy series but I haven't really done much more of that I was interested in it and then it wasn't good enough for me to be hooked I'm still not necessarily bored I don't want to read this ever again anymore I just kind of fell out of the mood and wanted to read stuff that I haven't read before. And then the final one that I'll talk about is Ship of Magic. So I picked that one up again by Robin Hobb. I started reading it at the end of last year when I bought it and I was actually kind of disappointed because I didn't really care that much. I haven't finished it but I just again wanted to talk about it because I did start reading it in April again and that is I'm interested in Kenneth. He's not a good person but I'm well I think he's not based on what he said about himself and that he's a pirate but I'm interested in him and who hurt him for him to be so callous in the scenes that I've seen him in. But the main other person Althea I don't care about her and I don't know why she just seems unlikable to me for some reason and it's really silly because her her story is that she's supposed to be inheriting this ship that's about to become a live ship because her father who is the third generation to have died on this ship who, who was about to die on this ship then the ship like quickens and it becomes alive and then Althea is the one who's been putting all the work in and is the only they don't have any sons actually so the so the guy that owns it right now her dad they don't have any sons they all died so she has then been received this opportunity that maybe she wouldn't have elsewhere who knows but she's been living aboard the ship with her dad and learning all about how to be a first mate and everything like that back in a medieval-esque time when they that wouldn't have really happened and she's pretty much been setting herself up to be the one that inherits the ship except her mum has now talked the dad out of it because her older sister or a younger sister one of the sisters has married a guy and so they're going well the mother is like you can't shame him by not giving him command of the ship because he is your son-in-law and you've got no sons so this is a story that has turned into a woman being denied her birthright and something that she has worked for just because of her gender and you would think that story would really intrigue me, but there is something about Althea that I just don't like. So I picked this up again on e-reader. So I have a physical copy and an e-reader copy. And I picked it up again on e-reader because that was kind of convenient. And I was just sort of needing something to read on e-reader. And that's why I picked it up again. Was interested and now I'm not. So I don't know where I'm going with it. And we'll see. But that is all the books that I want to talk about for this two months that have just happened. Thank you guys so much for checking out my channel again. I guess a quick life update is that Miles is now 11 months old. He's going to be one on the 24th of May, which is crazy. I can't believe we have had him for nearly a whole year now. I'm definitely enjoying this age the most because he's crawling. And that's a lot more fun for us because he's just checking out the house and he's so intrigued by everything and he can actually go where he wants to go. I hope he hasn't been too noisy in the background. Whenever he's made a loud noise, I've stopped and then repeated myself. So I'm hoping that in editing, there won't be too much chaos for you guys. Thank you guys so much for checking out my channel again. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and I'll see you all in another wrap up. Bye!